Hey guys, so this is uh, video number two. Uh, so hopefully you've watched the video where we put the cubes in the vinegar and saw the results of that. So um, if you're doing this lab for me, again, remember start with name, date, title, lab number, um, and then our purpose statement. So again, the purpose of this lab is we want to model uh, the transport of materials through different cells, okay, and um, or cells of different sizes. And, and we want to see that, and it, it kind of makes sense. So it's kind of like a city. Um, when you drive through Sheridan, it might take like five minutes, okay? But if you tried to drive through Denver, uh, it might take you a couple hours. So it takes a long time. The bigger the cells, we're going to see that time, that time that it takes to get materials in and out of that cell is going to take a lot longer, okay? Uh, then what we're going to focus on on this video is, okay, how do we calculate surface area to volume ratio? And then what does that mean for the cell? And, and then hopefully we'll be able to connect all of this and, and see that how just increasing cell size doesn't allow a cell to function properly. And that's why we see cells divide rather than just grow larger. Okay. So um, again, yeah, so we saw the three blocks, we put them in the vinegar, uh, we started to see that color change. Uh, and we noticed that it, it didn't, it didn't change throughout the larger cells. Okay. Uh, so those observations, you can go ahead and make those right now. So go ahead and pause the video uh, and talk about how, yeah, we saw that the, the vinegar was able to make it through the cell because it all changed color, changed that clear yellow color. Um, and then we can add that it didn't on this one and then very little made it through on the, on the large cell. So go ahead and pause the video, um, add that in there, and then we'll talk about these in a second. So um, now as far as calculating surface area, okay, so let's start with that one. So if we go down a couple slides, it tells us how to do this. So we have simple formula. We do base times height, and then we're going to multiply that by the number of sides of a cube, okay? So here over here, we can see the base, base times height. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, counting the top and bottom. So we have six sides to a cube. So when we do this in our data table, we'll see how you, well, I can use this pen here. We know that the base of our one centimeter cube is going to be one. And we're going to multiply that by one, which is the height. And then we're going to multiply that by the number of sides, which was six. Okay. So those math wizards out there, um, one times one is still one. And then one times six is going to give us a surface area of six centimeters squared. Okay. Um, and so we can go through and do the same thing here. So follow that same process uh, and add those into your, um, into your uh, data table for surface area. Okay. So hopefully um, you... Added, we're able to add those in there. Um, so we see two times two times six equals 24 uh, centimeters squared. And then three times three equals 54 centimeters squared. Okay. Uh, so we can see that our, our surface area is going up. Okay. So now let's look at the volume. So how do we, how do we calculate volume? So if we look on that other page, volume, a little, little simpler, we just go base times height times width. So um, for our one centimeter cube, we're going to go one because we know that's base times Oh, that's supposed to be a times. There we go. One times one times one. Oh, that looks like a V. Hot diggity. There we go. There we go. Um, so one times one times one is still one. So we have a volume of one cubic centimeter. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video um, and do the same thing for our other two cubes. Okay, so hopefully um, you're able to do those pretty simple math here. Um, so now we should see that we have a volume of eight cubic centimeters and the volume of 27 cubic centimeters. Now, um, the big thing that we want to focus on now, though, is um, the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, now all that is when we're doing a ratio is it's a simple division problem. So we're taking our surface area and we're going to divide it by our volume. So we're going to take six and we're going to divide that by one. Okay, and so uh, anything divided by one stays the same. So six divided by one is six. Okay, now how do we write a ratio? So basically what we're saying is for every one unit of volume, we have six units of surface area. So our ratio would be then we just add six to, use our little colon sign there, um, six to one. That's our ratio, a six to one ratio, okay? So go ahead and try that. Again, we're gonna go 24 divided by eight. That's gonna give us our first number. And then we're gonna say that number to one, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and try that. Okay, so 
Um, I accidentally drew the multiplication symbol there, so we can see that I changed that to a division symbol. So now, again, so we can see, so for surface area to volume ratio, just take our surface area divided by our volume, that gives us an answer of three. So that tells us that it's a three to one ratio. And then finally for this one, a two to one. So big takeaway, one of our analysis questions asks us what happens to the surface area to volume ratio as cell size increases. So we can see as we go from a one centimeter to two centimeter to three centimeter cell, it's getting larger, but our ratio of surface area to volume is actually decreasing. This is why it becomes so difficult for cells to get all the materials they need. One, they need more, and they have to pass through that surface, right? That surface area represents our cell membrane. And we know that everything has to pass through that cell membrane to get into the cell. So if this is decreasing, that means we have less surface area to let stuff in compared to the volume that we have. That's why we see um, the color didn't change all the way through on our big cube is there's not enough surface area to allow enough material in to get to that entire cell in a timely manner. Okay, um, so that's the big part for your data portion. Again, don't forget if you if you didn't do this, make sure to fill those observations we made on the cubes in there. Okay, so now let's look back. Um, let's look at our analysis question. So basically, uh, we we should have done all of these. So was the was the vinegar able to make it through all parts of the cube? No, it wasn't. So tell me, what did you see? What did we see there? Um, now, this is the second one. Does surface area to volume ratio change as the cell increases in size? That's what we just saw, right? So as the cell increases in size, our surface area to volume ratio goes down. So yes, it does change. Um, and it changes because it decreases as cell size increases, okay? So in this experiment, what did the cubes represent? So watching that first video, we should be able to fill that in. And then what does the vinegar represent? Okay, so we should be able to answer that one pretty, pretty easy. Okay, so now um, question number four says, let me move my guy out of the way here. Oh, I can't move him. Oh, there we go. Uh, it says, uh, using evidence from the lab, explain why cells cannot continue to grow larger. Well, we did two things, okay? We calculated the surface area to volume ratio, and we saw as cell size increases, surface area to volume ratio decreases. That's one piece of evidence. That makes it harder for the cell to get the materials that it needs. Our second piece of evidence then is we saw that because the vinegar was not able to make it through the larger two cells. Okay, so those are our two pieces of evidence that we want to include there. Uh, and then this last question, question number five, uh, is asking us, okay, so how does the surface area change if a large cell is divided into smaller cells but has the same volume? Basically, it's kind of the exact opposite of question number two, right? So instead of saying, okay, we got a small cell that's going to get larger, we have a large cell that we're going to divide up into smaller cells. So what we would see here is our surface area would increase, right? So we get more surface area per unit of volume um, if we were able to divide that cell into smaller pieces, okay? Now, uh, last piece with our conclusion or our synthesis. Remember, um, who did the lab? What did you do? How did you do it? Why did we do it? And finally, what did I learn? Okay, so make sure we get that in, get this submitted on Google Classroom.